toilets. What comes to your mind when you hear that word? A trivial action? A daily need? A nightly disturbance? A drunken congregation? A work break? A time to be alone? An excuse to leave a bad date? A safe space? An inclusive space? A right you have to defend? Whatever rings true to you, what is certain is that toilets have now become the new battlefield of the gender war. What might seem now like an irrefutable right to toilets was not so obvious before. Um, with industrialization and, and you know industrial revolution, urbanization, you began to get the introduction of public toilets. And in London in particular, there were some very early ones about the 1850s and then the 1870s, some London boroughs introduced toilets. But generally they were exclusively for men or in some cases there was a very, just a very couple of cubicles for women as well. And this caused a lot, a lot of trouble because the view was that it was improper, if not immoral, for women to be out on the street on their own. They were presumed to be prostitutes and the, you know, sex workers. Therefore, they wouldn't need toilets because no respectable woman would need a toilet outdoors because she could go home or she ought to be at home to start with. But the reality was a lot of women, the working class women were working in factories and mills and they needed toilets and a lot of middle class women were beginning to go out in going to these uh, new department stores and shops and stay out for the day and they and they and perhaps going to meetings and very, all sorts of things and they needed toilets too so what happened was by the oh beginnings of the end of the 19th century beginning of the 20th century you begin to get uh, the first wave of feminism the first wave of fight for women's rights and this included the right for women to vote and the suffragettes, which was a huge thing, but also the, the suffragettes, they had a huge, they had a very lengthy agenda, uh, sort of policy list of other things. And one of them was the right for toilets. And there was a group called the Ladies' Lavatory Association in the early 20th century that campaigned very strongly for toilets for women. The provision of public toilets is fundamental. It allows individuals to freely move without being held back by their biological needs. The arrival of unisex toilets has redefined the urban landscape and has had its share of controversy. But why are unisex toilets causing such a fuss? A lot of the feeling is because actually women's rights haven't already been met and therefore the, the movement towards unisex toilets is thereby reducing women's rights. Women's right to use the toilets, have equal access to the toilet, is there being reduced further. And that can come out as a backlash against trans people or against kind of the unisexing of stuff. Whereas actually that's kind of not the main problem. The main problem is we're not thinking from an equality perspective from the very beginning. Like women's toilets provision is really lacking already. And I think when you have a space that is already um, unequally uh, provided for in terms of genders, that when you, you then becomes this kind of fighting ground around unisex, whereas to me that's not the actual problem. The problem is just the lack of adequate provision across across the board. And I think when you then have organisations that then slapping unisex signs on everything, all that really does is make that one set of toilets more accessible to men. Women have always had the bad rep of taking a long time in the toilet. Often blamed on women's vanity, research has found that it is in fact due to a lack of toilet provision. However, do women and men use toilets the same way? Women require um, toilets that meet their particular biological needs because women don't only urinate and defecate, they also menstruate as well. And also they tend, women get pregnant, women go through menopause, women tend to have incontinence problems more than men. And all these reasons, it's very necessary to have <coughs> toilets that meet women's needs as, as well as men's. I think there is a lot to be said about public toilets and toilets in buildings and workplaces. I think this is a really important human rights issue. I think toilets in public spaces, in, in urban landscapes, in nighttime economies are a really important issue. I think they speak volumes about who is welcome in urban space for leisure, for culture, for work, for education, and who is not welcome. When you have a scarcity of public toilets, when you have hardly any disabled access toilets, when you have no baby changing spaces, for example, you are sending a message that certain people are not welcome in those areas. Our society strives to live in harmony with one another. So why the issues surrounding unisex toilets? 
I think people are often coming from a place of real fear and sometimes real experience and that's I don't want to undermine that I think what we need to be doing is moving away from a society that that is is causing that and I think there's unpicking on all sides to do I think it's also unfair uh, when people who are standing up for that are suddenly called all sorts of names and being accused of being really exclusive on other things because actually they may be coming from a different place so I think there is my main concern is where is the work being done to look at how we're unpicking all of these sort of forms of discrimination and oppression and where are we all working together in allyship to tackle some of the the main and root causes of these conversations rather than getting caught in these conversations. But somehow the patriarchy suddenly seems as this kind of old, outdated, old-fashioned idea that only kind of middle-aged women are really concerned with and it's like I don't know where the consciousness raising or the links are being drawn between the fact that the patriarchy impacts on trans people, it impacts on men, it impacts on women, non-binary, it impacts on all people. And it's the kind of cause and the underlying like root to a lot of these conversations and a lot of these problems. The elephant in the room that doesn't get discussed enough is the issue of sexualised male violence against women and children. And I think some of this resistance to mixed spaces comes from an issue that is indeed real, which is that girls and women from girlhood are taught to manage and be responsible for the threat or reality of sexualised male violence. That's not something that is going to go over, away overnight. This also gets missed in this debate. So when people react to or are cautious about or have concerns about mixed space, that may not always be coming from a place of homophobia, transphobia or discrimination. It could be coming from a response to years, a life's worth of socialisation into hypervigilance. And I think we need to get real about that. Unisex toilets are part of a modern societal discussion. But what does the law say? It's, to some extent it's ambiguous, but in, there are very st uh, strong government principles, regulations, standards regarding toilet provision, such as the British Standard 6465, sanitary installations, building regulations, various sections of that, and also various other government, the government acts over the years. And none of these things have changed. And of course, the school uh, regulations for school buildings and education acts, none of these things have changed. So technically speaking, everything that's happened regarding creating gender neutral toilets is strictly speaking illegal. Unisex toilets reveal complex realities for many. Solutions to please all are being studied and trialled. Um, I think there is something very different if you were to create a genuinely accessible space and you're thinking about accessibility across all of the equalities groups um, and then you create single sex, uh, sorry unisex but single cubicle spaces that maybe have a sink inside there, there's no urinals that you have to then walk through, um, there's adult changing facilities, there's also disabled access. I think when you think about equality across the board and you create a space thinking about from the margins to the centre rather than who, you know, the, the other way around, I think that would solve the problem a lot more than kind of what comes down to a really kind of binary argument around unisex, single sex, who's in, who's out of this space. That space is inadequate. If we address the problem thinking in an intersectional way, I think a lot of this argument might go away. I think shortages of public toilets is a national scandal anyway. I think the the fact that there are less women's toilets and less spaces used for women's toilets, I also think that's a national scandal. And I'm happy to have those discussions. But what would be the problem if we were going to build, agree as a society that we need more toilets, not less? I don't see what the problem would be in making, say, a majority of those unisex, which can then be used by everybody, as long as they are single occupancy stores. What I don't think is a good model, and I have seen it in places, is where you have single occupancy cubicles and then a shared mirror sink and bin area. I don't think that works. I don't think people feel so comfortable with that. So I think what seems to work better is single occupancy cubicles that have a sink and a mirror and a sanitary bin and a waste bin in every single one. That takes up more space and it costs more money. But because I believe access to public toilets is a really important human right and is also about accessing culture and leisure and space and exercising your rights as a citizen, I think it is something that private businesses and the state should invest in. Why are unisex toilets only raising concerns from women? 
Why are certain types of feminists being portrayed as the ultimate enemy? Women represent nearly 52% of the population, the majority. What can explain that society is acting so quickly to help ease the identity qualms of some, yet has consistently been ignoring the essential needs of more than half of the population for centuries?